Okay, hi there. So I am here today to give you a brief introduction to how to use my package GDI for doing body mass estimates and a few minor related things for an extinct animal that you have a multi-view reconstruction of. First off, let's quickly go over what you need to have prepared before we start using GDI. This, most importantly, is your reconstruction. In this case, it's a multi-view reconstruction of Plateosaurus. So here we have our axial segment. Depending on how exactly you want to do your estimate, it might make sense to break it down further. But in this case, I will stick with a single axial segment. And we have the hind limb and fore limb. Because I am lazy and this is just a brief overview, I don't have anterior views of the hind and forelimbs. We could of course use those. Using them will be analogous to using the dorsal view that we have of the lateral view for the axial segment. So um, I will show how to use two views of one segment uh, on this axial segment here and I will do a quick and dirty improvisation for the fore and hind limbs because I don't have an interior reconstruction for them. In terms of format, these are all PNG images simply with a transparent background and a non-transparent foreground. So foreground here is black, but it could be any color as long as it is opaque and the background is completely transparent. That is how the default settings for GDI work, but you can also change them to use, for example, a white background, black foreground, or the reverse. So these are our images. This is just our R script that I will be following now, and I will run, give you a rundown of uh, each line in, in this script and what exactly it does. So. First thing we have to do is start up R, which I've already done here. So um, in this case, R is already open in my directory here. If you are unsure if it is, you can type get wd for get working directory, and it will tell you what directory you are in. In this case, I'm already in the right directory. If I am not, I can use set working directory, set wd, and then I can enter the path of the directory, then I will hopefully end up in the correct directory. One thing for Windows users is that you need to actually replace the Windows default backslashes here with normal slashes because Otherwise, it will give you an error message. Okay, now given that we have managed to start up R correctly and navigate to the correct directory, let us get started and start up GDI. For that, first of all, we have to have GDI installed. If we haven't already done that, we can do that using install packages GDI. I will not execute this because I already have it installed, but if you don't, this is how you get it. It will install relatively quickly because it's a small package. Now, given that we have it installed, we can use library to load the package. It will tell you that it is also loading some dependencies that it needs, specifically JPEG and PNG for reading JPEG and PNG images. And now we have our preparation pretty much finished and we can jump right in on the silhouette. So first things first, we will read our lateral view. We do this using the function measure sil for measure silhouette. We just need to tell it the file name, in this case lat.png. And in this specific case, we want to specify return full or basically any other character string except for the default that is um, not to return any 
additional data. In this case, we want to import the additional data because we want to plot our silhouette. And then using the assignment operator, that is just dash and in this direction, the greater than sign, we assign it to some arbitrarily named variable. In this case, I will call it lat, but you can call it anything. I mistyped. It is Marisil with an A. And there we have our lateral silhouette digitized. Or, well, it was digitized before, but we have it saved in R as an R object now. If we want to quickly look at what that object looks like, we can use head to just show us the first few lines. Looks like this. For every pixel along the length of the entire silhouette, it will give us one measurement of the diameter. In this case, the first few are zero because the first few pixels, the first few columns of pixels don't have any black pixels in them. And then the rest of the silhouette has actual diameter measurements. And because we specified full, it also saved another column with the centers. This we will use for actually plotting our silhouette. It's not important for our estimate, so we could also just leave that out. In that case, it would only give us this first column. So we will now quickly do the same for the dorsal view. We will just copy it in this case. And now we have a similar table also for the dorsal view. And then for the forelimb and the hind limb, we have to specify one additional option, and that is align V, because it has to be vertically aligned because we didn't rotate them. If we had to rotate them, we could just simply use the same settings we've used for this horizontal silhouette. In this case, um, we did not. This has some advantages, which we will see when, we, when it comes to plotting our silhouette. Um, so that is why that function or that setting of that function exists. So once again, we do pretty much the same thing, but with one additional setting, align V. And we will save that to FL and we will save the hind limb to HL. So now, our silhouette reading phase is already complete. So from this, the main step that is left to do is actually doing a GDI. But before that, what I want to quickly show is how to plot the GDI, which is useful as a quick plausibility test if what we um, read from the file actually makes sense. So we can hopefully catch errors before they make it into our results. So for this, we use function plot sill. We can just give it the object we saved from reading our lateral silhouette. We need to specify asp for aspect ratio one, because we want the silhouette to be in the correct aspect ratio. And we specify scale 1000, because 1000 pixels are in one meter in the case of this specific silhouette. That can of course be whatever resolution your personal silhouette has. Now we hit enter and this is what it gives us. So this is a plot of the silhouette. So for now just the lateral view silhouette and it looks reasonably correctly imported. What we can now do is add some further silhouettes uh, that we also imported and check that they all check out and there are no, no errors or no digitization artifacts that will throw off our results anywhere. We can add this setting that is add true for adding the silhouettes to the already existing plotting device. And it will look something like this. Dorsal view also checks out. And now we can also add the limbs. 
This is why it is useful to digitize them using a line V and not just rotate the images, because this way we can maintain the correct coordinates for them and plot the whole thing together all in R. In this case we need to add one further option that is flip, because reading vertically um, flips around the data frames, so we need to flip them back. And our plotted four limbs in this case will look something like this. So there is a little bit of an issue here in the fingers, but this will have basically no effect on the size, on the volume estimate, so it is not really a problem for us in this case. We can also do the exact same thing with the hind limb, and it will look like this. So we have now checked that our silhouette basically checks out as we planned, and we can proceed to do the actual estimate. We do this using the GDI function. GDI function is simply type GDI, open brackets. Now we give it our lateral view, that is the object lat, and our dorsal view, object dors, and then we have to specify a scale. Now this depends on what you want to get as your output units, so if we wanted this in cubic meters, we could just use the thousand that we already used in the plot. In this case I think I want the result in liters, so I will specify 100, scale equals 100, because 100 pixels will be in 10 centimeters. So we will now hit enter and here we have our volume. So this is the volume only for the axial segment of course, we will get to the limbs and that is about 40 liters. We can now do the same with the hind limbs. In this case we don't specify a dorsal view, we just use our lateral view again as an anterior view. However, since we assume that our limbs are probably a little bit narrower than they are long in anteroposterior direction. Um, we will specify a correction factor using core, which basically just multiplies every segment by this value. You could also leave this entirely uh, out of uh, the function itself and just multiply the end result by 0 0.67. Um, slight advantage of this way is that you could theoretically enter correction factors for each individual slice. So you could, um, for example, interpolate between different correction factors over the entire length of the limb or whatever structure you're doing. So we specify this correction factor, we keep the scale as it is, and we get our volume for the hind limb. That is of course one hind limb, so for getting the total sum of all parts we would then have to double that. And for the forelimb, again, we do the same thing. We just use our already imported forelimb data frame and get our forelimb volume here. That is basically is it for the process of size estimating. Um, two other quick things I want to show because they are related and maybe sometimes relevant. You can also use return full on GDI. In this case I'm going to do that with the axial segment. And what it will give us is a data frame containing all sorts of additional information pertaining to the mass distribution of the animal. So this looks like this, quite an extensive data frame, so it has various raw diameters and scale diameters and slice lengths. And if you save it like this, you could just um, simply sum up the column V, so using sum axial 
V to get your overall volume, but more importantly, you can use these data on the mass distribution in order to calculate things like the center of mass and also things like indicators of inertia. So for example, if I want to find out the center of mass, in this case it's Pladiosaurus, so it is fairly interesting to know if it is capable of standing on two legs, of balancing on two legs. So what I do is I use the function hcom, which is short for horizontal center of mass. I give it this object that I already saved called axial. And I find out the coordinate, in this case in the original units, that is in pixels, of the center of mass. If I now want that to convert that into units compatible with what I just plotted, I have to divide by 1000. And I can visually put it on my plot using a b line, just a base r function, a b line v for a vertical line, and then divide by 1000. This is where our center of mass ends up. So as we can see, it is above the feet, which is good because otherwise the animal couldn't balance on those feet. That is center of mass. On a related note, we can also calculate rotational inertia. For that, we can use the function rot i. We can again just give it the same object saved by GDI full. In this case, we have to specify an axis. We, want, we are interested in rotational inertia for lateral movements, that is your rotation. And we need to specify a different scale in this case, because the scale that rod i is interested in is actually the linear scale for meters and not for liters. So we specify scale 1000. We already saved our volume estimates, as you will recall, as liters. In this case, the particular units are important because we need our masses to be in kilograms and our lengths to be in meters. So um, that is, in my experience, a common source of getting figures that are off by a few orders of magnitude if you forget to specify the correct scales for each step. So having done that, we can quantify rotational inertia. And what it gives us are several indicators. One is total mass, then it gives us an estimate of rotational inertia treating every segment as a single point mass. And then two estimates based on treating them as elliptical or rectangular slices. And then finally there is a corrected version. This one we can um, correct on the basis of another function that actually reads an image of the cross-section. In this case it's just the default elliptical version and you could apply a correction factor within Rodi to um, get a corrected estimate of rotational inertia if you wanted to. Okay, that is basically it. So um, I think we've covered all the basics of how to use GDI for math estimation. Um, if you have any questions, let me know and I will hopefully be able to help you. Okay.